Welcome to part one of two, talking through how to build a 48 hour get home bag. Building off of the first bag, we covered the 24 hour bag, moving on to the 48 hour bag. It'll be a lot of the same items. Just a little bit more gear and a lot more water. So if you want to know how to build a 24 hour bag, I'll show you a walkthrough on how to build this specific bag and everything that's in it. Moving up to this bag, obviously it's got a little more capacity. It's a lot heavier. That bag weighed in at 14 and a half pounds in this bag with enough water for 48 hours. It was all the way up at 21.3 pounds. Um, spent a little bit more money on more high quality lightweight equipment so that it would fit in a bag. And also so that you're not packing unnecessary weight on since you're gonna be carrying more weight for more time with the 48 hour bag than comparing it to a 24 hour bag. Um, the bag itself is a little bit higher quality so it'll be a little more comfortable, a little bit more durable for the longer trip. It's also just, it's a bigger bag to begin with, so you have more space to store more equipment. Um, the previous bag, we spent some of the storage capacity just storing some of the extra clothes like underwear and socks. There's a little bit of that in here, but the bungee straps here on the front or so that you can attach the larger clothing items to the outside of the bag and it's not taking up space inside the bag. You can also reference the clothing supplement video that we talked through on the kind of clothes that you probably want to pack to supplement the backpack and all the gear and the water and the food that you're um, packing for this, this get home bag. Um, so the goal of the 40 hour bag is to get you a little bit further distance, whether that's pushing closer to 25 miles or more, something you can't reasonably expect to cover in a 24 hour time period, or there's something that's preventing you from covering shorter distances in a 24 hour time window. Obviously 48 hours, you need more water, you need a little more food, uh, especially if you expect to have any sort of usable energy on that second day, and you're definitely gonna need to stop at some point to sleep at least once um, so a little bit more focus on some gear, shelter, a lot of water. So with that, um, it's a lot to cover. Talk about just the backpack and the four, first storage compartment in the first video. The second video will be on to all of the gear in the second compartment. Um, just quickly going over the bag, it's fairly slim. It shows up on Amazon as being a woman's bag, um, which is a good thing because it's a little bit more narrow. So if you're trying to be streamlined, if it, have it fit in the car, a little easier um, that will help it is still comfortable it's not like the shoulders are considerably narrower than another bag would be and the padding is good quality it's a decent amount of ventilation so you don't get too sweaty the little clips for the chest um, they're adjustable unlike the bag that we've covered previously these are kind of fixed on the previous bag um, we got a couple straps for things that are maybe a little more, more um, like quick access, whether you want it to be a knife, um, just a quick pocket fold knife, something bright that's hard to lose, and flashlight or whatever else you want to be quick, quick and easy to access. There on the front, you can see that there's pouches for water storage on the outside of the bag. I'd say that a hundred, a hundred ounces, so three liters of water, is the bare minimum for 48 hours. So this Nalgene right here on the side gets you the full, four, or gets you almost half of that, 48 ounces. These liter sized water bottles, they're a lot more durable than most of the normal sized water bottles are. A lot more durable, so they'll handle more abuse trying to get shoved into either the backpack or your car getting thrown around. Um, Hold up to the elements a little bit better and the caps so any of this style one liter water bottle um, the cap will actually screw onto the Sawyer mini water filter which makes it way more convenient um, and then it gets you the next 33.8 fluid ounces so another liter there and then all of the additional supplementary water is either what you have with you in the car or you can add those um, lifeboat water ration water bladders that we've referred to in previous videos as well. Um, on the outside too, just a life straw, easy way to filter water. If you have an extra water source of questionable quality, 
Um, there's not nearly as much way to attach gear to the outside of this bag. There are a couple straps here on the sides. Uh, if you wanted to attach things to either of the top handles or any of the loops on the, the straps. Um, so not nearly as much expandability as a bag like this. So we've got all the molly webbing and Velcro. But good quality carabiners at least can get you some extra storage capacity, whether that's on a hook like that or just daisy chaining carabiners off of each other. Uh, probably want to get a good quality carabiner, something that's got a little security device that keeps it from coming loose. So like this Night Eyes has a little slide lock, so easy to use until you will slide this little lock down and then the carabiner will not open. Um, it doesn't need to be like climbing quality, it doesn't need to support a ton of weight, but something that's reliable. So you can attach things like headlamps, or if you wanted to attach more water via Nalgene bottles. We've talked in previous videos, or in the previous video of the 24-hour bag, of pros and cons of um, single wall stainless bottles if you want to collect and expect to need to boil the water to purify it. Um, obviously, these big Nalgene's, they're convenient and they nest with stainless steel cups, but not as easy to get water in and out of these narrow mouth bottles. If the whole goal of building this 24 hour, 48 hour bag is to get home as quickly as possible, then probably not a good idea to set yourself up for needing to stop to continually purify oil water or make prepared meals. So like I said, we'll talk through this bag. One other quick option though, especially on the topic of trying to get enough water for a full 48 hours. They're a little more expensive than these Camelbacks. They come in all sorts of sizes. You can go closer to that size or up to this size. This is a 28 liter backpack. The cool thing about Camelbacks is obviously they're built to house a water bladder. So not that it would be a good idea to store water in here long term. It's harder to clean these things, but if it holds 100 ounces, full three liters, this is enough for a full 48 hours in itself. And then whatever extra water that you supplement on top of that is just extra capacity, extra capability. Um, like I said, the Camelbacks, they have a compartment with a hook so that all of this weight isn't just sinking down to the bottom of your backpack with a little hook built in back here and then a little slit to put the actual nozzle through. Uh, makes it really easy to have enough water for you at all times. If you're going to store or if you're going to use a camelback in your car, uh, maybe a good idea to store the water in a separate one gallon container and then when you go to actually take this backpack out to use it is that's when you actually fill it for the first time. It's a lot easier to refill a gallon water jug or replace it every two months or so as opposed to having to take this out, scrub it out and clean it and then put it all the way back in every couple months. But it's important to make sure that you have the water with you in the car. Just quickly going over the rest of the outside of the backpack. So obviously things that you want to be able to access quickly, whether that's water or basic knife, flashlight, headlamp, clothes, if you want to strap those in the bungee or whatever other items you want to attach to the bag with carabiners. It's completely up to you. There's not a whole lot of extra expandability because you don't have the molly webbing like you do on the backpack like this, but it is also a little bit easier to blend in. It's less tactical looking. Um, it just looks like a normal backpack. Some of the other features of, the, of this backpack. So it's got the flex vent suspension system. It's just their specific name for their strap and padding and the fact that it allows some ventilation. It does kind of stand up by itself depending on how top heavy it is um, and what you've got packed in it. Um, it does have two 
webbed padded handles on the top gives you a little bit more carrying capacity and less likely for it to tear the stitching out on just a single. Um, it does only have two compartments um, and there's a laptop, like padded laptop storage compartment that you could maybe use as a Camelback water bladder storage compartment but there's not a separate standalone um, slit to get the the nozzle and hose out of the backpack like there is on most Camelbacks or backpacks that are built for a, a water bladder. Um, it retails for $69. If you have access to an exchange, whether that's Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, um, you can get a little bit of a discount. I paid 55 for this, and it's a little bit cheaper than we can get it for on, on Amazon. Um, but so far I've been happy with it. It comes in all sorts of different colors, and it's a little less tactical looking than the stuff with the Molly on it. We like to blend in a little bit better. And then since there are only two storage compartments, you gotta be a little more creative with how you'd like to organize everything that's in the backpack if you'd like to have a decent chance of finding everything that's shoved in here. So the little yellow tab we'll reference in a second. Basically, this little legend um, using VanQuest's color coding kits. Um, all of these colors correlate with the different items. So black being tools and tactical. So I've got things like this Mora survival knife. Uh, it's pretty easy to just disconnect from this if you'd like to attach it to either the outside of the backpack or your belt with a little belt loop. Probably be convenient to be able to access that easily. Same thing here, just undo the button and you can get this off. Either put that somewhere else, either in your pocket, on your belt with the loops, or um, attach it to the side of the backpack. Just it's again, basic multi-tool. The rest of stuff in here will be tailored based on the situation that you're dealing with, but flashlights, pens, pencils, um, other little multi-tools, whether it's like a little screwdriver with multi-bits or different things like that. Also, with this being a 48 hour kit, you need to do a little bit more serious of a battery backup if you'd like to be able to repeatedly charge your cell phone. So, a little bit bigger. Make sure that you're bringing at least one. Maybe it'd be a good idea to bring a backup cable to connect your phone. While we're on the topic of charging phones, uh, depending on what situation you're in, these, they're called lock sacks. It's a, just a heavy-duty, waterproof Ziploc container. Um, you can see that it actually works. You can use your cell phone still, completely watertight in the storage compartment. If you get a big enough one, you can put both your phone and the charger connected inside of here and completely waterproof, dustproof, dirtproof, scratchproof. Um, the package says you can even use your phone. I'm sure that does not mean like talk on the phone, but and full use of the touch screen. So I recommend that for your sensitive electronics so that's not just in your pocket if you're dealing with crossing rivers or a lot of rain flooding, things like that. Also, even though it's a little bit more time than the 24 hour kit, still should be able to get away with really basic um, sewing kit like this. It'd be a little bit harder to fit a more full size sewing kit like that. Depending on how heavily you pack this thing, you might be at a premium for extra storage space. Um, so that's the tools and tactical. Obviously there's a little bit of overflow tools and tactical items elsewhere on the outside of the pack. A little box cutter knife and then some other tools throughout the backpack that we'll eventually get to. Um, but that yellow being comms and navigation, depending on what type of route you're expect expecting you need to take, that could be something as simple as just a roadmap of your local area, or it could be GPS equipment, compass, any sort of map, anything else that you might 
consider usable or useful for comms or navigation. The rest of the stuff in here is just kind of like miscellaneous emergency type things. So disposable emergency poncho, emergency blanket, and a mosquito head net. Useful in the south for sure. Um, just a little energy. Shoes. This stuff we've all covered in the previous video, but depending on what type of situation you're in, you might be a good idea to boost your immune system with some of those emergency vitamin C packets. Write in the rain pad for you to leave yourself or others notes. And then a pen to go along with it. A normal pen should be fine, especially if you've got a backup. You can use the tactical pens. They're a little corny. They can be used as a um, like a self-defense tool. Some of them will have like a glass break point on one end or maybe like a handcuff key on the inside. Like I said, it can be kind of corny, but if you're at least getting the use of a pen out of it, then maybe it's better than nothing. Okay, so we're gonna lay the backpack down now. Keep this out so we can continually reference the colors and what they correlate with for the organization of the backpack. And then we'll just continually lay all these items out on the table.